subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello students and viewers, <clears throat> you are welcome once again. I'm taking you in financial accounting for SHS1. Your facilitator is Adade Gottlieb or GK Adade. Now, our previous lesson, we learned on accounting equation. We also discussed the element of accounting equation. I hope you could remember what we did the very last time. Yes, so <clears throat> what is an accounting equation? And what are the elements? And you should be able to explain the elements. So an example, what is an asset? What is a capital? What is a liability? We learned all this in our previous lesson. So when you ask what is an asset, resources owned and controlled by the business, which must bring economic benefit to the business. So that is an asset. We also learned of capital, all financial obligations of the business. And also, the, uh, uh, the, that is the liabilities, all the financial obligations of the business, and the capital, all resources invested into the business. That is a capital. And then the liabilities are the financial obligations. We also learned how to identify an account given a transaction. And we also learned that you sh for every transaction, you should be able to identify two main accounts, of which one must be debited, the corresponding must be credited. But we also learned the effect of this on the uh, statement of financial position, which is a balance sheet. So that is why I always entreat you to follow every lesson of the Joy Learning Channel, especially in financial accounting. Okay, for today, this will lead us to a double entry of bookkeeping. So we are looking at double entry of bookkeeping today. So by the end of this lesson, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define double entry system of accounting. Double entry system of accounting. Define a ledger. State the characteristics of a ledger. Then list the types of ledgers and explain them. Should be able to list the types of ledgers and explain them. Then define and explain the types of accounts. And then state the double entry rule for assets, capital, liabilities, revenue, and expenses. Now, what is a double entry of bookkeeping? What is double entry? So double, this is very simple topic. Double means what? Two. Double means two. So we should have two accounts, of which one must be debited, and the corresponding account should be credited. So double entry of bookkeeping. So now let's look at it. It is an account. It is an accounting principle that recognizes the, uh, that every transaction should have two aspects, one having a debit and the other credit. It is an accounting principle that recognizes that every transaction should have two aspects. So every transaction should have two aspects, one having a debit and the other credit entry. So that is a double entry. So one must be debited, then the corresponding account being credited. So this is an exam question. What is a double entry of bookkeeping? Double entry of bookkeeping. So accounting principle that recognizes that every transaction should have two aspects. One having a debit and the other credit. Now, what are the benefits of double entry of bookkeeping? Let's look at the benefits. So if 
You have these two aspects. What are the benefits you get from this? Benefit of double entry or bookkeeping to a business or to an entity. So if you are observing your double entry principles, is there any benefits? What are those benefits? So one, it facilitates the preparation of trial balance in order to check the arithmetic accuracy of the accounting entries. So when the double entry is, uh, uh, is prepared, we extract an account known as what a trial balance. So this trial balance, uh, all things being equal, this account should balance. So when it balances, or when even it doesn't balance, then it is giving you an, indi an indication that whatever you have done, there is a problem with it. So you need to revisit the entries passed. <clears throat> so what, we, what is being said here is that once it balances, then at least you have an absolute uh, reason that what you have done is correct. So what we, this point is saying is that it gives us what arithmetic accuracy. So we know whether the entries passed are correct or are wrong. So once you observe the double entry, you know whether your entries are accurate or they are not. It helps prevent it helps prevention of what errors. So you debit, you credit your corresponding account. So it will help to prevent what errors. Prevention of what errors. Then it facilitates the preparation of financial statements. So we call something financial statement. So which we'll be looking at later. Preparation of financial statements. So here we talk of comprehensive income statement and statement of financial position. So we say normally trading profit and loss account and a balance sheet. So once you observe the double entry of bookkeeping, you'll be able it to facilitate the preparation of the financial statement, which is a comprehensive income statement and statement of financial position. So these are some of the benefits. Benefits of double entry of bookkeeping. It helps to detect errors in financial records. It helps to detect errors. So you have recorded one, and the corresponding account is also recorded. So it helps. So when there is any error, you can easily detect this error. So it helps to detect error in financial records. It serves as a source of reference to all transactions. So now, you debit, you credit. So writing itself alone is a source of reference. So you have a reference point. So these are some of the benefits of double entry or bookkeeping. It enables comparison between financial statements of a business. So in financial accounting or in businesses, there are comparisons. You compare. So for instance, this year's profit against the previous years. So comparison is very, very necessary. So once you record your transactions, both debit and credit, you will be able to compare, to know how the business is progressing. So it's very, very essential to observe this double entry. So these are some of the benefits of double entry of bookkeeping. Now, it assists in tax computations. So once you have <clears throat> all your entries there, then it can, you can easily compute your tax. The amount of tax to be paid to tax authorities or the government. So these are some of the benefits of the double entry of bookkeeping. Now, what is a ledger? What is a ledger? Now, when you go to account offices, you see big notebooks there. So these books are what we call ledgers. So they are not anything strange, ledgers. So some are very big, some are long, and all that. 
to this what we call ledges. So when this word is being mentioned, you should not think of anything difficult. <coughs> they are just books, but they are the main books of the business in which the transactions of the businesses are recorded. So that is a ledger. Ledger. A ledger is the principal book of account into which entries from the journals are posted using the principles of double entry. They are the main books of which all the business transactions are recorded. So basically, you should know that when we mention ledgers, they are just books. Books. But they are the main books of the business in which, uh, in which transactions are recorded. Ledgers. Ledgers. Again, it's no principle, but principal books. That is the main books of the business in which transactions are recorded. Now, <clears throat> what, are, what are the types of ledgers? Types of ledgers. So we have about five main types of ledgers. So we're going to look at them. Types of ledgers. So we have sales ledger, purchases ledger, private ledger, cash book, and general ledger. There are five types of ledgers. So again, <clears throat> what we should know is that these books are the main books or they are the principal books of the business in which the transactions are recorded. So we have sales ledger. Sales ledger. So what is a sales ledger? What do we mean by sales ledger? So a book of account which keep records of all credit sales. So a book, when you sell on credit, the book that you pick to write in it, that is a sales ledger. So I don't think this is difficult. It is very, very interesting. Sales ledger, you sold on credit. Where are you going to record this? So the book that you pick to record the sales on credit, that ledger is known as sales ledger. Now, if you have a book that records credit sales, if you pick that book, what are the things you see in that book? Or what are the kinds of information that you see? Or type the kind of people that will be in that book? So once you sell on credit, then it means that book contains names of people who owe the business. People who owe the business. So they are debtors or trade receivable. Debtors or trade receivables. So once you pick the, that book, you see names of people. And those people owe the business. So those people are debtors or they are trade receivable of the business. So again, if you sell on credit, you record it in the sales ledger. Now, purchases ledger. Purchases ledger. So this is the opposite. So when you purchase on credit, the book in which you record this is the purchases ledger. Purchases ledger. So what are the kind of people that can be seen in this book? So once you purchase on credit, then we are talking of credited here, or suppliers or trade payable. Suppliers or trade payable. The debtors are <coughs> customers or trade receivable. And then creditors, payables or suppliers for purchases. So these words, we have to know them very well. It's record all credit purchases of the business. So the information that will be recorded in this, the purchases ledger will be for creditors, trade payables, or suppliers. So when these words are mentioned, we should know what they are referring to. Then private ledger. Private ledger. So what is a private ledger? So this is a ledger that records information about the 
owner or the owners of the business. So this book, any information about the owner will be recorded in this book. So that is why it is known as what? Private ledger. Private ledger. Informations about the owner or the owners of the business will be recorded here. Private ledger. Now it's record items of personal interest of the owner. So things that are interest to the owner of the business will be recorded here. So an example will be drawing. So anything the owner takes from the business or anything he brings to the business. So when he takes something for his personal use or her personal use, that will be regarded as drawings. And anything that is brought by the owner to the business, that is capital. So these informations of the owner will be recorded in the private ledger private ledger cash book cash book so this is a book that record cash and bank transactions or check what transactions so let me give you an example for instance if you sell on credit you record it in the sales ledger but if you sell cash or check then that information will go to the cash book. So all the books, they have functions. They have functions. So you cannot just pick any book at all and record anything in it. They all have their respective functions. So we have to know the books and the kind of informations that are recorded in them. So cash book, a book that records cash and bank or check transactions so anything that is cash or check so when it is check that is where we use bank check check bank so cash and bank transactions will be recorded in the cash book so it record cash and bank transactions record cash and bank transactions so general ledger what is a general ledger so this is a ledger that record anything the above mentioned cannot record. So we made mention of sales ledger, purchases ledger, private ledger, the cash book. So anything these ones cannot record will now be recorded in the general ledger. General ledger. So it is a book that records all transactions which cannot be recorded in any other ledgers. Any other ledgers will be recorded here. So that is a general ledger. So these are the types of the ledgers that we have. The main books, the principal books in which the business transactions are recorded. So again, what we said was that is the principal. Now let's look at the, the features. What are the features of the ledger? Features. It is a principal book of accounts. So as we said, it's the main books of the business in which the transactions are recorded. It is divided into debit and credit side. So we have debit and we also have credit. So two sides, debit and credit. So normally we say T accounts account so the left being debit the right being credit so divided into debit and credit size it contains individual account of transactions so individual account of transactions are recorded it can be classified into different sub ledgers so we may have different sub ledgers it contains entries from the journal it contains entries from the journal so those are the features of a ledger now what is an account when you are asked what is an account so this is a one exam question what is an account 
So, it is a double entry record of a transactions relating to a specific item that have taken place within an accounting period. A double entry record of transactions relating to specific item that have taken place within accounting period. So, for instance, you, have, you open the sales account. So it means this all the information that will go there relate as specific to sales. So it summarizes the information in one account or that relates to a particular item. So that is an account. It is a double entry record of transactions relating to specific item that have taken place within an accounting period. So that is an account. So one exam question, when you are asked what is an account and you want all your marks, then I urge you to listen and go by this. Examples of an account. What are examples of an account? So Kofi's account, Van account, Amma's account, and what have you. So these are examples of account. Motor vehicle account, salary account, and all that. So along the line, we'll look at it. So I urge you to continue watching the channel. So these are examples of uh, an account. An account. So types of accounts in the ledger. What are the types of accounts? Types of accounts. So we have two main types of accounts. Two types, main types of what? Accounts. So that is personal account and impersonal account. Personal account and impersonal account. So we define accounts. And then what are the types of account? Only two types. Main types of accounts. Personal and impersonal accounts. Now, let's take it. What is personal account? So as the name suggests, this record information about the persons of the business, including the firm or any other business the business is dealing with. That is personal account. Personal account. And who are the persons of the business? So we talk of trade receivable and trade payable, debtors and creditors, Customer suppliers. These are the persons of the business. It consists of account of people and other organizations. It consists of account of people and other organizations. It is normally account of debtors and creditors and kept in the sales ledger and purchases ledger respectively. So we had a look at sales ledger and purchases ledger. So as of now, we know things that will be or be recorded in the sales ledger as well as the purchases ledger. So that is why you need to get the terms. So as your teachers are mentioning the things in class, you know what they are talking about. And as you continue to watch the channel and the words are being mentioned because you continue to watch the channel, you understand whatever is going on. So again, it consists of account of people and other organizations. Account of people and other organizations. It is normally account of debtors and creditors kept in the sales and purchases ledger, respectively. Now, impersonal account. Impersonal account. Two types of account, personal and impersonal account. Impersonal account now. So and it, this one will record anything that is no persons of the business. Anything that cannot be recorded by personal account. That is what impersonal account. So these are account of items other than people or organizations. So for personal, we talk of people and organizations. So aside these, 
The rest are impersonal accounts. And this is further divided into two, or classified into two. The impersonal accounts is further classified into two. So we have real accounts, real accounts, nominal accounts. So now what you should know now is that you should know that the impersonal account is classified into two. Real accounts and nominal accounts. They are examples of impersonal accounts. Impersonal account. Now, what is a real account then? Real account. Real. Mm, assets. Things you can touch and feel are real. So these accounts representing assets or properties of the business. Account representing assets or properties of the business. As we learned earlier in our previous lesson or discussion, we learned about assets, properties, owned and controlled by the business. Assets. So this one record the real accounts representing assets or properties of the business. Example could be tangible asset or intangible asset. So what are tangible assets? So those that can be seen and touched. Tangible assets. You can see, you can feel, you can touch. That is tangible assets. What are the examples? Land, building, motor van, furniture and fittings and others. So these assets can be touched and feel. So they are tangible assets. Tangible assets. Then intangible assets. These are assets that cannot be seen and touched. They can be seen and touched. Example, copyright, patent, goodwill, trademark, and others. So this is for the real accounts, real account assets, which could be tangible or intangible assets. Tangible or intangible assets. Now, nominal, nominal accounts. What do we mean by nominal accounts? So, or oh, this one, all expenses and revenue of the business. Expenses, revenue. So, and then the nomina is being mentioned, then what will come to mind is expense and revenue. Expenses and revenue of the business. So these represent items which do not have physical existence or exist in name. They do not have what? Physical existence. These are concerned with income, profits or gain, losses, expenses, and what have you. So these represent items which do not have physical existence. Or they don't exist in what? Name. They are concerned with incomes, profits, gain, losses, expenses. So for your objective, you should get some of this in. Which of the following is not a nominal account? Or which of the following is a nominal account? So again, if nominal is mentioned, then expenses, revenue, gains <coughs> are the things that is supposed to come to mind. So you should be able to score your objective concerning some of these things. And again, I always advise that once you have gone through topics in accounting, you should be able to answer a final year to, uh, a question on that particular topic. Then you are good to go. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's look at the types of account then in a diagram form. Diagram form. So we have the accounts. 
So we made mention of personal account and in personal account. Accounts, you have two types of accounts known as personal and in personal accounts. Then under personal account, you have debtors and creditors. This has been explained earlier, but this is the diagram on it. The diagram on it. Then the real account. For in personal account, we have the real account, then the nominal account. Real account and nominal account. Two types of account, personal account, in personal account. The examples of personal debtors, creditors, or trade receivable, trade payable. Then we go to impersonal accounts, having two. So real accounts and nominal accounts. Real accounts and nominal accounts. So examples of real account, which can be tangible asset or intangible asset. So we made mention of a tangible assets, land and building, motor vehicle, fixtures and fittings, and water view. Then the intangible, goodwill, trademark, copyright. They can be felt and touched. Then nomina, nomina as we said, revenues and expenses. Revenue and expenses. So I hope once you follow and you listen, you watch the channel, questions on this, you will be glad to answer. So double entry system of accounting. So we mentioned this earlier, double entry system of accounting. So what is the equation then? We said asset equals capital plus liabilities. Asset equals capital plus liabilities. So the double entry rule for assets, liabilities, and capital. So we want to look at the double entry rule on this. Double entry rule on that. So the equation is assets equals capital plus liability. In the previous lesson, it was explained how this equation came about. Why asset should be equal to capital plus liability as our fundamental accounting equation. As our fundamental accounting equation. So now we're going to look at the rules on the assets, capital, and liabilities. So now debit, 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 increase in assets, decrease in liability and capital. Now, the assets equals capital plus liabilities. So the capital and liabilities are having one side of an account while the asset is having the other side of account. So in other words, the assets have a debit balance, capital and liabilities have a credit balance. So any time your asset is increasing, you debit. And if your liabilities are decreasing, you debit, as well as your capital. So again, debit increase in assets, decrease in liabilities, and capital. So because assets are having a debit balance, Anytime it is increasing, you debit. The liabilities and capital are having a credit balance. 
So if they are also increasing, you credit. But in this case, they are decreasing. So what do you do? You debit. Debit increase in assets and decrease in liabilities and capital. So this is one of the rules for assets, liability, and capital. Assets, liability, and capital. Let's look at the next one. Credits. So we discussed the debits. So credit. Credit increase in liabilities, capital, and decrease in assets. So this is not difficult at all, at all, at all, at all. Assets are having a debit balance. So once it is having a debit balance, when it is increasing, you debit. And it is decreasing, you credit opposite. And if capital, liabilities are having a credit balance, which means if they are increasing, you credit. And they are decreasing, you debit. So you need to get these rules before the start of the double entry. So you know what to debit and what to credit. What to debit and what to credit. So when you are asked to state the rule, you should be able to state the rule. Debit increase in assets and decrease in liabilities and capital. Credit increase in liabilities and capital and decrease in assets. In assets. In assets. Credit increase in revenues and decrease expense. Okay, so the revenue is having a credit balance and expense is having a debit balance. Revenues or incomes are having a credit balance. So for you to do accounting well, you know to know you need to know your debit as well as your credit. What should be debited and what should be credited. So once you have gotten this basis, you are okay. So again, revenues are having a credit balance and expenses are having a debit balance. Opposite. If revenues are having a credit balance, then automatically expenses should have a debit balance. So if purchases is having a debit balance, then sales should have a credit balance. So know your debit and your credit. Your debit and your credit. And you enjoy accounting. You enjoy the subjects. And you do very well. So again, credit increase in revenues. So if revenues are having a credit balance and they are increasing, you are adding up so your credits. Credit increase in revenue and decrease in expense. So expenses are having a debit balance. So when it is decreasing, you do the opposite by crediting. By crediting. So get these rules, especially the balances that the accounts are having. Assets have a debit balance. Capital and liabilities have a credit balance. Expenses are having a debit balance. Revenues or income or gains are having a credit balance. So once you have gotten this basis, once you have gotten the basis, then it means you do very well in accounting. 
So once you know the other, then the, uh, the other one applies. The opposite applies. So if credit increase in revenue and decrease in expenses, then if it is increasing, what will you do? So debit increase in expense and decrease in revenue. So revenues are having a credit balance. Now they are reducing. So what do you do? You debit. So these are some of the rules for recording. Assets, capital, revenue, expenses. Expenses. And I believe these are, especially if you look at it from the point of the equation, you will get it at ease. You will get it at ease. So these are some of the rules governing the accounts. So we want to look at the diagram on this. The diagram on this. So you take revenue. Revenue is having revenue is having a credit balance. That is why at the credit you see plus there. So if it is increasing, you credit. So this side, the left hand side is the debit. This side of the account is debit, and the right hand side. Is credit. So normally we say T account. Open T account. So always you have debit. Once you have your T account, you have your debit and you have your credit. Always. The position doesn't change. It does not change. Debit and credit. So if the revenue is having a credit balance, once it is increasing, what do you do? You credit you credit. Once it is inc increasing, you credit. If it is decreasing, you debit. So that is why the minus is at the debit. So decrease and increase. Decrease, increase. So if your revenues are increasing, you credit. If they are decreasing, you debit. Or in other words, if you want to add, you credit. If you want to subtract, you debit. That's the opposite. So increase and decrease. Now let's look at the expense. So exact opposite of revenue. Exact opposite of revenue. So expenses, so the side of the account again is very, very necessary. The side of the account, very, very essential. So if you know expenses are having a debit balance, then if your expenses are increasing, you debit. And if they are decreasing, you credit. As for the side of the account, it's constant. Your left is always debit, your right is always credit. So that one is constant. Debit, credit, and always debit before credit. Debit, debit, credit, debit, credit. So when your expenses are increasing, you debit. Or you, when you want to add more expenses, you debit. And if your expenses are decreasing or you want to subtract, you credit. So these are some of the diagrams on this. Now, let's look at recording in the T accounts. Recording in the T accounts. So, we learned the rule for debit and credit. We learned the rule for debit and credit. So, normally, open T account, you know that this side it's your debit, this side is your credit. Debit and credit. So the equality of a uh, basic accounting equation, that is the equation we mentioned. Asset equals capital plus 
liability. Asset equals capital plus liability. So as we learned earlier, the equation should always balance. The equation must balance. Asset equals capital plus liabilities. So your total debit, once you are passing any entry, your total debit must be equal to your credit. Your debit must be equal to your credit and value. So total debit must be equal to total credit based on the fact that every debit entry must have its corresponding credit entry. So you debit, you credit. So at the end of the day, the total should be same. The total should be same. The total should be same. So that is a double entry. So that is why once you open the ledges, you balance off, and then you extract a trial balance, then the, your trial balance, all things being equal, should balance. So when we, we had a look at the, the benefit on the double entry principle, we said it shows arithmetical accuracy of the entries passed. So your debit should be equal to your credit. Your debit is equal to your credit. So the equation should always be in your mind. The fundamental accounting equation should always be in your mind. And again, your debit should be equal to your credit. Your debit should be equal to your credit. So these are some of the rules we have to know governing the preparation of the account and balancing off to extract a trial balance. Extract a trial balance. Then what are the things that we have gone through today? The things that we have learned today or discussed today. So we started with the double entry. Double entry of bookkeeping. Double entry of bookkeeping. Double entry of bookkeeping. So we explain what a double entry is. We explain what a double entry is. So where one account will be debited, and then the other corresponding account will be credited. Will be debited. One must be debited and the corresponding account credited. So that is the double entry. The double entry of bookkeeping. Double entry of bookkeeping. Then we also discuss the benefits of double entry of bookkeeping. So we should be able to mention or discuss some of the benefits of double entry of bookkeeping. It prevents error, detection of errors, and all that, preparation of accounts, financial statement, and all that, source of reference, and also for comparison computation of taxes and others. Then ledgers, we talk about the ledgers as the main books of the business. Ledgers as the main books. And we made mention of five ledgers. So we should be able to mention and discuss and also discuss the things that should be recorded or the elements of the ledgers. So we have the sales ledger. Which record informations about trade receivable 
debtors or customers. So information about the customers will be seen in this book. Then about that of our suppliers, trade payables or creditors will be in the purchases ledger. Then the private ledger, informations or things of interest to the owner will be recorded in the private ledger. Then cash book, all cash and bank transactions recorded in this book. General ledger, recordings, the other books, the other four books mentioned earlier cannot record. Then we had a look at the features of the ledger. Features of the ledger classified into two contain entries from the journal. So these are exam questions. These are the theory questions. And we explain an account what it means what it means. So recording of uh, information concerning a specific item, specific item within an accounting period. Example, motor van, coffee's account, Amma's account, and a lot. So we also talk about accounts. So being two personal and impersonal accounts. So the personal record information about the persons and organizations and the impersonal. Things that are not persons and organizations are being discussed. So and again, the impersonal subdivided into two, real and then the nominal accounts. Real accounts and nominal accounts. So we also explain the real accounts. Real accounts. So accounts that record information about the assets, the properties of the business. Properties of the business. So which could be tangible or intangible. Tangible or in tangible. So when we give examples of the tangible, things you can feel touched. So motor vehicle, land and building, fixtures and fittings, and all that. Then the intangible. The intangible goodwill, patents, copyright, it can be seen and it can be felt. Then we talk of nominal accounts. The nominal accounts record info, uh, information on expenses, revenue, and gains. Expenses, revenue, gains. That is nominal. Nominal. Nominal accounts. Expenses, revenue. So we had a look at the diagrams on the types of accounts. So accounts, personal, impersonal. Then under impersonal, we have the debtors, trade receivable, creditors, trade payable. Then under impersonal, real and nominal. So under real, we have tangible, intangible, nominal, revenue, and expense. Revenue and expense. When we also look at the rule on the recording of asset, liability, capital, expenses, revenue. So you debit assets when they are increasing, and you debit liabilities, capital when they are decreasing. Decreasing. Double entry on that. Double entry. Then credit increase in liabilities and capital and decrease in assets. These are some of the things. So once you have known this, 
you'll be able to pass the entries. Credit increase in revenue and decrease expenses. Then debit increase in expenses and decrease in revenues. So you need to sit down, get them, get your specifics, think the side of each account. So but one you know that this account is having a debit balance. If it is increasing, you debit. If it is decreasing, you credit. If it is having a credit balance, if it is increasing, you credit. If it is decreasing, you debit. Or if you are adding up. So these are some of the rules you follow in the preparation of the accounts. And then the diagram on revenues and expense. Revenues and expense. So when your revenue is increasing, you credit. Decreasing, you debit. Your expenses are increasing, you debit, decreasing, your credits. Credits. Now, recording of business transaction using the T, we talk of the equations, the equation show balance. Show balance. Your debit should be equals to your credits. So these are the things that we have learned today. And I hope any question on this, you should be able to answer. Now, your question for the day, define double entry system of accounting. What is double entry system of accounting? That is your question for the day. What is double entry system of accounting? What is a ledger? What is a ledger? State the features of a ledger. State the features of a ledger. Then list the types of ledgers and explain them. What are the types of ledgers? Should be able to list and explain. So I urge you to practice this on your own. Then define and explain types of accounts. Should be able to explain the types of the accounts. Now state the double entry rule for assets, capital, liability, revenue, and expenses. So these ones should be very simple for you. The only thing is know the side of the account of these of this. So for instance, we know asset is having a debit balance. So if it is having a debit balance, once it increases, you debit. Decreases, you credit. Capital having a credit balance, increasing, you credit. Decreasing, you debit. Liability, same. Having a credit balance, increasing, you credit. Decreasing, you debit. Revenue, having a credit balance, increasing, you you, you credit, decreasing, you debit, and expenses, debit balance, increasing, you debit, decreasing, you credit. So I hope this is very simple for you to digest and be able to um, do well in your exams. So where will you get some of these informations? So the accounting syllabus, past questions, uh, financial reporting, uh, uh, terror financial accounting written by one Eric Aldrew, and internet and other places. You get some of these informations from there. And I urge you to research. So once you have discovered the things yourself, it is always with you. It is always with you. So these are the things that you need to know. And I urge you to continue watching the channel. So the next time we meet, we will take, we will look at the passing of the double entry and balancing of an account. And I urge you to watch, to watch the channel. So that is the continuation of this. Last we did, we were able to identify two accounts. Now we identify Asset capital liabilities, 
And over here, we learned the double entry tends to be debited and credited. So now, the next time we'll look at the practical aspect of it. You are given a question. What are the things to be debited, things to be credited, and the balancing? And from there, you extract your trial balance. So some of these words, trial balance, you will get it well when we are taking the practical question. So these are the things you need to know. And I urge you to continue watching the, the channel. Thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.